Welcome to Assassin's Creed The Complete Story. It's time to continue our little lesson with Ezio by going into Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. This is the first game in the series to continue the adventures of a single assassin. Did you enjoy this change of pace, or did you want them to continue with the old plans of a new assassin every game? When we last left off, the Borgias weren't happy with Ezio humiliating Rodrigo. They launched a full-scale attack on Ezio's villa in Rome. This attack was led by Cesar Borgia, the son of Rodrigo, and the commander of the Papal's army. Half of Ezio's city was leveled before they even knew what was going on, and while he put up a good fight, eventually, after ensuring everyone was safe, he needed to flee the scene. His uncle Mario was killed in the siege, and Cesar invited Ezio to come to Rome and end this. It was time for Ezio to seek revenge once again, and he rode to Rome without even recovering from his own injuries, which led to him passing out on the journey. Little advice, if you just survived a siege, you might want to take a week off to go recover. Ezio would awaken in the home of Margarita, who was treating his wounds. She would tell him that he was dropped off by a mysterious man who wanted him to meet with Niccolo and also left him some new assassin's robes. Ezio would then journey to Rome, learning that it's in such a poor state due to the fact that the Borgias have taken control and the citizens are being horribly oppressed. As Ezio explored Rome, he would meet a few new friends and learn of the Borgias' locations, and he managed to establish a base for assassin activities. After a few more adventures, Ezio's mother and sister then arrived in Rome, and with the recent death of the Madame in a brothel, Claudia Auditori took over as the new Madame. One mission of note was that Ezio met with Copernicus, and Ezio learned that Copernicus was a former Templar who grew tired of them and left their group. Copernicus then set Ezio on missions to save his fellow scholars, and after doing so, taught Ezio astronomy, and then they parted ways for good. While he was no closer to finding where Rodrigo and Cesar were, Ezio would be sent on a mission to rescue some people, expand the Brotherhood further, and eventually track down another member of the Borgias. While not one of the members that he was looking for, you gotta start somewhere. So, he decided to sneak closer and closer to this man that they called the Banker. But after assassinating a member of the Borgia family, they once again got irritated with the Auditories and sent their French allies in to attack the assassins. Ezio would then take it upon himself to assassinate the leader of the French army, the Baron. To ensure that the Borgias couldn't attack him back so quickly again, the assassins would make quick work of all of their supporters and allies in Rome, and that Ezio would unite everyone underneath him as he purchased most of Rome. At this point in the story, Ezio was pretty much in command of the city. This drew the Borgias out of hiding as Cesar returned to Rome to meet with his father and try to resolve their new problem, Ezio. The resolution that Rodrigo wanted was to poison his son to end this, but Cesar saw this coming and killed his father in retaliation. Ezio witnessed the fall of Rodrigo and watched as Cesar hurried out of the city to retrieve the apple of Eden that his father had hidden so long ago. But it wouldn't be that easy for Cesar. Ezio chased after him and the two men hurried to the location of the apple that Ezio had learned of the location of from one of his allies. Luckily, Ezio managed to get to the apple before Cesar. Ezio had Cesar arrested by Pope Julius' papal army for all the things that Cesar made the army do. And he held the apple to get rid of the final bit of control that the Borgias had. Cesar shouted that, No chains will hold me, and no man can murder me. This troubled Ezio, but he watched as Cesar was hauled off. Everything from the game prior and this one seemed resolved finally. Ezio controlled Rome, he rebuilt the Assassin's Order there, he eliminated the Borgias, and he now controlled the apple once again. Oh, and he paid a very large chest of gold to his friend Da Vinci. But Cesar escaped, and shocked, Ezio used the apple once again to find where Cesar had gone. But by the time he got to the location that the apple had told him about, he was too late. And with that, he chased Cesar, and eventually caught up to him, killing everybody on board of his ship, and once again, taking Cesar prisoner. This time, the Pope had him shipped off to King Ferdinand to pay for his crimes. While he wouldn't tell Ezio the location of Cesar, he did make Ezio counselor to the Pope. With that, Ezio met with Leonardo da Vinci, and they began an adventure in which they would rescue da Vinci. That adventure would bring them both to the first civilization vault that, through Ezio, would reveal to Desmond's team the coordinates that he needed in the future. Da Vinci wanted to study it longer, but Ezio would distract him, and the two men would walk out, leaving it to be found another day. Upon their return, they found out that Cesar had once again escaped! Seriously, this guy's like amazing. He's just, he should be like the new escape artist. He was making a new army and laying siege to a town in Spain. It took Ezio until 1507 to finally track down Cesar, but he did, and he hurried straight to the battlefield so he could finally end this feud between the Borgias and himself for good. This was the final killing blow as he finally took Cesar's life. That's it. The Borgia threat is finally gone, and Ezio has learned much and still got his revenge. But, 
What is he going to do with his time now? Well, he found a letter in Mario's old desk in the destroyed Auditoria Villa. It mentioned a vault locked away by keys underneath Altier's old home. Altier, the man who is practically the father of the modern assassins. Ezio needed to know more of the Assassin's Order's purpose. He needed to know more of the first civilization. And with that, Ezio set sail for Syria. What happens next? Well, I guess you'll have to find out next time when we cover Assassin's Creed Revelations. Thank you for joining us, and make sure you follow us on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook, and we'll see you next time here at Eligible Monster.